Hi, welcome to the Remote Chiefs channel on the YouTube network. I'm the Chief. How you doing today? I have some awesome news. I passed the Part 107 Drone Remote Pilot Test. That's right, I'm an officially licensed remote pilot by the FAA. Ready to go. So, what was my score? What were the questions like? How are you going to pass? Let me tell you and break it down for you. Come on, this is the Remote Chiefs channel and I'm always here for you guys. Let me give you some points. So I passed with an 87. That's right, I got an 87 right here. I can show you guys and I will. Here it is. A nice 87. Mm -mm -mm. My first try ever, I did not have to take it twice and waste my money. $150 one time. How did I pass? What did I do to pass? To be honest, I did buy one of those flight schools. At first, I urged people not to do it, and I said, forget it, learn all the information yourself. But I wanted to really study quick, and I wanted to get it done in about a two week period. So what did I do? I went to remotepilot101.com. Jason over at remotepilot101.com, he's great. I really like how he presented the videos, I like his information, and he gave me enough ability to pass that test. So thank you Jason at Remote Pilot 101. I am one of the people who paid for your subscription and I am now in with you guys and I am now a licensed remote pilot with the FAA. Uh, holding my US Department of Transportation FAA Administration Airman Knowledge Test Report. It's cool when you go take the test. It's nerve wracking. You get to the location. Luckily my location was very close and very small. There was really no one else taking the test but me. There was an old guy that had been giving plane certificates for the last 20 years out of his little office about a five minute bike ride from my house. I got pretty lucky. I don't think it's going to be that easy for everybody else. I got very lucky. I'm in New York surrounded by tons of airports and there happened to be a nice old man who had a beautiful air school right near my house. So with that being said, how did I do? What did it feel like? So you're sitting in the room and they give you two hours to take the test. Two hours. That's a long time. But there's 63 questions. I was told by a lot of people there would be 60 questions. That is wrong. There are 63 questions. Maybe other people will get more or less. I'm not sure. I got 63 questions. I was happy about that because there was about nine that I was unsure about. I'm telling you, nine questions I was unsure about. I got nine wrong. I got an 87 on the test, so they said I got about nine questions wrong. What were the questions like? I tried to remember as much as I could to tell you guys. I tried to really look at some of the questions and keep them in my mind so you could later on have that knowledge. You're definitely going to have to know longitude and latitude. That's pretty simple. They're going to tell you to count and basically each quadrant inside of a map on an, you know, in any aeronautical map, that's going to be 30 minutes up and down. And then the whole quadrant is going to be the 60 minutes. So you count 30 up and down. It's pretty simple. And then when they, when basically you can see from each number, 100 all the way to 101 is 60 minutes. They put a line in the middle with no number. That's going to be the 30 minute line. Basically, they're going to give you two coordinates. 101, blah, 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 at 43 minutes, 48 at 28 minutes. And you're going to have to just count the minutes and see what airport they're talking about. Sometimes they're going to talk about something you should know about the map. Basically, they're going to tell you what is the height elevation of the tower, the lighted tower. And there's going to be three towers there, and you're going to have to know the one with like little lines on the top means it's lighted and then you're gonna see the numbers next to it you're gonna have to know AGL and MSL that's big on the test because they'll ask you questions and they'll ask for the answer in MSL but they'll give you the answer in AGL and if you're getting them confused or you think you have it right and then you switch back you're actually gonna get the question wrong even if you may actually know the answer that sucks so don't do that trust me uh, here's one question I remember verbatim, it, exactly as it was written. It said, when can a remote pilot fly at 10,000 feet MSL? And at first you would say, I can't fly at 10,000 feet, that's so high, it's class A airspace and I'm up there with Boeings and, but no, the question said MSL, above sea level. And you know, I skipped it at first. I can't believe I skipped it, that's ridiculous. But I did because it just kind of, I was like, hmm, and I went on to the other ones. I got back to it, and then it hit me. When I had more clarity, I said, ah, oh, I can fly at 10,000 feet MSL anytime I want, as long as I'm in Class G airspace. And that was the answer, as long as you're in Class G airspace. I mean, this, you know, and you stay below 400 feet. Like, that's, 
The key is you're up at that elevation already. You can fly at that. It's above ground level. You can only go 400 feet above ground level, but you can go even higher. You know, if you're at already at 10,000 feet above sea level, then you're actually flying at, you know, 10,400 feet. That's your limit if you're at a 10,000 feet medium sea level. So that's important. Get those two things figured out. Don't get them confused. Don't lose the easy questions. Like, these are the ones you really want, and they're right there for you. Don't mess those questions up. Okay, what else do we have on the test that I can remember? Uh, a few questions about alcohol. My question was, you're a pilot going to inspect a pipeline tomorrow morning. You don't, you stay up late and drink anyway. You wake up in the morning still feeling a little hungover. A, what do you do? You know, or what do you do? A, you take some coffee and caffeine to get through the day. You know, B, you do an over-the-counter drug to stay stimulated. Or C, you cancel the shoot knowing that you are already still impaired from the night before. And the answer is C, you cancel the shoot. You know, you do the safest thing. All those answers, you see the safest question. How long does it take for alcohol to get out of your system? It, three hours per each a, a shot, a glass of wine, or a beer. It takes three hours. They're going to ask that question three hours. I had about four questions talking about alcohol and the content you could have or if you could fly with that or not. One strange questions I, I kept getting were about positioning of weight on an airplane. They were never, and the answer literally said inside of a glider or inside of like an, a, an airplane. They never asked me questions about a drone. And that's in the aeronautical handbook. You can find that information. It's in there. And it says uh, where to position things forward and aft because usually the wings are further up. They're not completely in the center if you look at a plane. So then the center of gravity is, is you know, a little different because it gets narrow. Basically, you have to learn where the center of gravity is best how it, and what affects the, the load. If you put load further back, how it's going to affect the plane. I didn't study that stuff heavily. And to be honest, they gave me about three questions of that type. And they literally, the questions kept saying, in a plane, you know, in a, in a loaded plane. And I was, man, like, I'm not here to load planes. I'm here to fly drones. But they wanted me to understand that. Um, something else you should know is there's a chart. It's in the aeronautical handbook. There's a chart, and it basically shows the G-force per the degree of angles. And it basically is like at 30 degrees, at 45, at 50. And basically as the, as the angle changes, you're gonna actually create a higher G-force and the load will feel heavier on the drone. And basically what you do is there's a number and you can see the number, you times it by like 1.58. Basically as it goes up, each degree has a different number on the left. So 45 degrees with 1.58, you know? So they're gonna give you a load, 35 pounds. How much is that going to be affected at 45 degrees? And what you do is you times the 35 pounds by the 1.58 on the map. I got that question. I got it right. I got that question. So you're going to have to know that little map and the loads. One thing about Remote Pilot 101, it was great. It had a lot of answers, but it's not going to give you every single thing. He tells you, even while he's telling you, you know, phone up on that handbook. Read a little bit of this. He says, you know, it's all here, but they're throwing so many questions at so many people. I don't know if anyone even got the same test. Maybe everyone got these crazy, strange questions. I don't know. I got some really strange questions. About half the test, I did have to use a magnifying glass and use the diagram. They give you a big book, though, an 86-page book. And you know what? Some answers are in that book. I'm telling you right now, if you don't know everything, but you studied a little bit, and you know that book because if you studied on Remote Pilot 101, he lets you go to these diagrams over and over again. And eventually you're like, oh, that's where these came from. Another thing you're going to need to know, you do have a, a resource and it has information in it. And if you scan it heavily, there's going to be some information that can help you. Study all those lines on an aeronautical chart. You really need to know an aeronautical chart forward and backward. I now can look at a chart and nail it. I can just see it. I can say this is class B airspace. This is class C airspace. I say this is the circumference. I can see where the airspace changes. It's not always a circle. Sometimes the shelf is semi-circled over here. Sometimes there's reasons why the shelf changes. You have to pay attention and look where you're flying. You can always go to skyvector.com whenever you're about to fly. Jason taught me that. His good friend created that website. And you can go there and that's going to teach you where you are in the aeronautical terms. Basically, you can see all the things going on. And Sky Vector has created uh, dot dro dotams, basically drone notams, which are great. So like if someone's having a shoot, they put it right up. Everyone can see there's drones flying right here up to 400 feet. And there's a blue circle. It's just like a notam, 
but it's a it's a drone tam you know it's really interesting I think it's very very cool what are there other things that I could tell you to study on the test that you really need to know you need to know how to read a METAR forward and backward straight up just you need to know all of the different things rain fog light rain heavy rain some rain if that's there clearly visible this is a huge one what's the definition of a ceiling the lowest broken or overcast cloud level that's the definition of a ceiling and that's kind of a trick question in a way because they'll read you a METAR and they'll say 1100 OVC you know and then it will say from because then you have to know your tasks too you have to know METARs that show longer periods of time so basically you have to understand that it's gonna change like it's gonna be a METAR that gives you more information and it's basically gonna say from 1100 to that day or these days and it's gonna keep giving you time you're gonna have to know when these things are gonna change basically you can say okay it's gonna be overcast from 1100 and then and then it's gonna be overcast at 800 feet so that's gonna what's the difference The the ceilings gonna change by 300 feet so they're gonna make you read through the METAR and then the question is gonna say how much did the how much did the ceiling change from 1100 to 1800 Zulu time and you're gonna say what how, how can I know that? They, there's no, where's the ceiling? You're going to have to know already that the definition of a ceiling is the lowest broken or overcast cloud level. So then you're going to go to 1100 and you're, when you first see OVC at that time period, you're going to see that and you're going to write down that number in your mind or, or, or you know, know that 1100. Then you're going to keep going until you see OVC again or BKN. They might put BKN and not OVC and now you're going to have to know that that's still a ceiling. It can be actually pretty frustrating this test and this getting this information down because it's not you can understand oh I know the definition of a ceiling like and then they could ask you that question you could nail it but what they try to do is make you take multiple definitions that you know and then throw you for a loop with a question so what you're gonna have to do is know things already and then use that stuff that you know to answer the question and, and about half the test is I'm not gonna say they're trick questions but they're worded in such a strange way that they make you have to think about what you know and question if you do know it already even though you do know it, it, it the test can get you going I'm someone who studies meticulously put a lot usually get high grades I only got an 87 I mean I know it's a good good score but I didn't nail it like there was still nine questions out there that remain up in the air for me and another thing I don't like is how they give you what you got wrong they really just outline what you got wrong like PLT 040 and you can go research that and it gives you the area that you, but it doesn't give you the actual question you got wrong. You can never figure out like the exact question you got wrong. I would have liked that because then I could have gone back and been like, oh, that's the exact question I got wrong. I'm trying to think of anything else I can tell you guys to help you study for this test. Know your METARs. Don't play games with not knowing a METAR. It'll take you basically a week to keep coming at them every hour. You know, spend an hour a night here and there. And within a week, you'll know all your METARs. It's not that serious. At the beginning, it looks like a lot of information that's just too much. It's not. If you go to remotepilot101.com, I'm telling you I did it. People are going to make, oh, you paid. Yes, I paid. Whatever. I paid the money. I went there, and you know why I paid the money? Because it gave me structure. I could go from front to back, all the way down, and I felt confident that I was going to pass the test. I felt like someone who had their license, who had been flying. He's not just a drone pilot, Jason. He's been flying and doing licensing and schools for pilots for years. This isn't just something he started doing. He threw on the drone pilot school on top of something he already offers. So he knows what he's doing. His videos played properly. The server worked right. Everything was awesome. It was in HD, clear. The audio was amazing. He wore a different shirt every time. You know, it was great. So if you guys really want to get your license, I would say go to remotepilot101.com. And if you don't want to pay the $100, don't, there's other ways. I have another video here in the description that's going to show you. And there's many other videos of people telling you the free way to do it. This is how I did it. I passed the test. I got the 87. And I am now a licensed drone pilot. It feels great to do this because so many people talking this and that. We're now licensed by the FAA. We have that government stamp. And you know what? It feels pretty cool to have a license. Hard copy. I still don't have my hard copy yet. They're working on getting me mine. They said they're about on January 11th now, or 12th, and I took mine on the 26th, so it takes the office, they go through about two days every day, so hopefully in about 10 to 12 more days, I'm going to have my hard copy in the mail, I can't wait to show you guys, I think it's going to be super awesome to walk around in my wallet and have our drone pilot license in there. Uh, I want to do one last bonus question that I knew was on the test, 
just to keep you guys here the whole time. There's one last bonus question that I knew was on the test, and what is it? What is the one last bonus question that I know is on the test? One other thing I want to tell you guys that you're going to have to know is you're going to have to know restricted areas. The difference between an MOA, a military operation area, and restricted areas, when restricted areas are fully restricted, what a prohibited area is, and when you cannot go in one and go in the other, how to read them on the chart, some are blue, some aren't, it's intense. So make sure you study that too because there's gonna be there's gonna be some trick questions on that. I got a trick question on that. It basically gave me the longitude and latitude. It said you're doing a shoot at this longitude and that latitude. So I had to go. So I had to know that just to get to the coordinates. That was one part of the question. I had to know that to get to the place. I get to the place and it says, is it is it safe to fly here? Number one, it was a wildlife refuge, which would scare you to think, you know, you can't fly there. But national parks are off limits, but that does not mean wildlife refuge. And that can get hairy too. So it, it throws you off. Now you're like, oh God, I can't fly in a wildlife refuge, you know. But they really wanted to understand if you could read the difference between a restricted area and an MOA. And if you could read the longitude and latitude. So I read the longitude and latitude, I got to the proper place, they asked me if I could fly there, I realized I wasn't in a restricted area, I was just in an MOA, which means you can fly in there, but you have to be careful, you have to be very watchful, and I said, yeah, I can fly over Lake Minnewaska. I got the question right. So I just want you guys to understand that it is a complex test, and there's a lot to it. So that's it. I don't know how many more gems I could give you. I don't want to make this video too long, but I told you what you could do to pass. If you go to remotepilot101.com, you're going to pass. Basically, take that full-on course that he gives you and do an outline while you do it. Don't just listen to the videos. Actually type an outline while you do it. The first three days before the test, just keep going over that outline that you created over and over again. Also, watch a bunch of videos of people like me telling you what was on the test. Everyone got a different test. I watched over 100 different videos and I wrote down all the different questions. So on top of Remote Pilot 101, I also watched a bunch of other people explaining how to pass the test. There's so many more people passing now, so there's more and more videos out every day. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please feel free to comment, like, and subscribe. Please join the tribe and subscribe. The Chief abides. I hope you guys passed your test, and I really appreciate you staying here with the Chief and learning some info. Have a great day.